look here, so you look on this hillside, and you look at what there's a lack of, and that's stalks, right? So you notice you get these colonies of things like the sotol, where you've got the stalks coming out. And they tend to congregate together. And one of the nice things about the stalks is when you start to think about it, this is an adaptation for spreading seed and pollen by the use of wind. And we're going to see more, it's just it's the first one I noticed. But we've got two species of agave here. Uh, we've got the agave lechugia, which is the indicator plant. And I'll talk more about that probably when we, now we're in the Ocotillo Plain. And you know, the Ocotillo is a plant that only puts out the leaves uh, when it gets a little bit of water. And then the leaves come out. And the spines on the Ocotillo are actually some of the leaves that have been modified. So it's got two different types of leaves on these stubs. So, Kinocerus horizontalonius. It's one of the weirdest names for any of the plants out here you're gonna find. How do you say that? Echinocerus horizontalonius. I haven't seen much like cow tongue up here. There really isn't any up here. We have some in there. You do? Yeah. It's just not as uh most of what we've got is the big brick, uh, big brick, big thin prickly pear, uh, the uh, Obuchia imbricata, just uh, I don't remember what the common name for that is, but that, that's all imbricata behind you. The big bend has the black needles. Alright, so this, this is one of those plants that's kind of like a locust of the plant world, or a cicada. You know how cicadas, they go through their cycle and then they die? So same thing with this agave. Most agaves only infloresce once. They only flower once. So it has to take all of its energy to send up this big stalk with all of the, either the pollen or the stigma and uh, the seed that it puts out. Once it does that, this plant dies. This one I... See where the chops have been taken out? The bites. See all the ants that are feeding on it? There's sugar in there, huh? Yeah. Little black seeds. See how much water was in there? You ripped it open. It still has glockets on it. Not many, but they are there. Which is why I'm trying not to touch the fruit too much. You see how juicy that is? It's kind of like a sour apple right now. As you go by this, uh, spot to look at the layers of rock. So you can see this red bluff, uh, red bluff granite sitting right over here and then on top of it you've got that grayish brown rock. So that up there is limestone. Okay and then you've got granite below it. So how does that happen? Well the way it happened is that all that limestone used to be the seafloor. 
about 25, 30 million years ago, we had an event here called Laramide Orogeny. Orogenies are mountain building events. And what happened is one plate subducted underneath another and pushed it up at 30 degrees, which is why you see a lot of that 30 degree angle in a lot of the profiles of the mountains here, especially as you're going through Trans Mountain and you can see that 30 degree up angle. And that's particularly what happened. The other thing you have to look at is that you've got the Rio Grande Valley out there, but guess what else is out there? The Rio Grande Rift. So a rift is an area where two plates are moving away from each other. New material is coming up every year and they push away from each other at the rift. So those mountains way out there are moving away from us at half a centimeter a year. And we're moving away, or I'm sorry, a full centimeter a year. On that side of the rift, half a centimeter. On our side of the rift, we're moving east half a centimeter a year. This is not the greatest day to see it, but that area out there also has 120 cinder cones. That's all the volcanic activity used to be here. This valley is not bedrock, it's all fill. It's 8,000 feet of fill. So before the fill happened, from the top up there to the bottom down there was close to uh, 15,000, 16,000 feet. So you can imagine how much more impressive these mountains look like before the fill, uh, uh, excuse me, before all the fill got into the valley and leveled it out. So is that lava? Uh, the the lava black fields are over here. Because you've got uh, Kilburnie Hole, uh, which is uh, an old... Uh, Bubble. It, it's a volcano. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the cinder cones out there, different other different types of uh, volcanoes. But if you're going out, uh, New Mexico, what is it, nine? Going to Deming? Anybody remember? Yeah. I think it's New Mexico 9. You're going to pass a few areas where you've got lava fields. It's black rock, and when you walk on it, there's no mistake. You know you're on the lava fields. So a lot of uh, tectonic geologic activity. Uh, there's a lot of evidence out there for it, so it's really interesting. The other thing is, is how many came from northeast east side this morning? All right, that big bubble of rock you drive by when you pass the first curve after the museums, it's North America's only exposed magma dome. So think about that. And that marble you see, the striped pretty rock, that's marble. And then you have granites, you've got basaltic rock. So geologically, this place is where everybody wants to come, which is why UTEP used to be the school of mines. All right, and that's not mines like brain, that's mines as in where you dig for gold. Mm -hmm.